Welcome to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Joyous conversations about what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about our one reality. You have nothing to fear. You are eternal and you are perfectly loved. Knowing the truth changes everything. Now, here's Roberta. Welcome to Seek Reality. I'm Roberta Grimes and I'm so happy you're with us today. My dear friends, as you know, each of our lives on Earth is essentially a tough day in what our wonderful friend Craig Hogan calls Earth School. And we plan our own lessons here, and we don't want easy lessons. We come here to grow spiritually so we can have even better and richer and more beautiful lives when we go home. And eventually, we'll raise our own consciousness vibrations enough that we can stop incarnating on Earth altogether. And sometimes the lessons that we face on earth can be heartbreaking, but we can surmount and grow from even the very hardest losses. And I've just read a book that I think everybody should read. I hope you won't ever need it yourself, but someday someone you love very much may suffer the kind of terrible loss that will make you wish that you'd read this book. It's called Healing from Great Loss, Basing Pain and Grief to Recover Your Authentic Self. And its author, who's with us today for the second time, is a healing professional who also has suffered this kind of loss herself. The greatest loss I think anyone ever can suffer. Dr. Ann J. Clark spent most of her career as an academic researcher, most recently at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, where she directed the Center for Nursing Research. She's a sought-after speaker on the afterlife. She's a, a Michael Newton Institute certified life practitioner, life between lives facilitator, and a Reiki master. She's the owner of and she practices at Wisdom for Wellness in Hoover, Alabama. Her popular great loss workshops are offered online, and she holds a BS in nursing from McAllister College and in, in a Master of Nursing from Emory University, and she's a registered nurse, so she's very well credentialed. Her PhD is from the University of Chicago. She's the author of numerous professional publications. Previous books she's co-authored are Llewellyn's Little Book of Lives Between Lives and Wisdom of Souls, which was the winner of a 2020 Coalition of Visionary Resources Gold Book Award. She's been the recipient of numerous awards, among them the prestigious Peggy Newton Award from the Michael Newton Institute. And welcome. I'm so happy to have you back with us today. I'm delighted to be here and thank you so much for having me. And you suffered the loss in this life of your daughter. She's your only child, too. You know, I didn't yes. know that before I read this book. I want to, as I was reading about that, I wanted to reach right through the phone now and hug you. It was a devastating loss. And very unexpected, also. She was, she's my adult daughter. And it happened while I was actually in the hospital having knee surgery. So it was, it came at, at a very difficult time. It was like a double whammy. Uh, and I never have been so miserable, both physically and psychologically in my life as I was at that time. I had a daughter who nearly died. Um, my oldest child um, who <laughs> didn't necessarily she's she doesn't always make good choices let's put it that way she had had her driver's license for two weeks she decided that was a very good day to drive across the country and she drove off the road and um had an she she suffered the same injury that princess diana did and at first they thought the other two were much more seriously injured um they then they took the phone out of her hand and the doctor got on the line and he told me very bluntly, they were put, take her into surgery and uh, not to expect her to live. Um, my husband is a physician. He got on the line and um, he told, the doctor told my husband that she, that she was going to bleed out while they tried to close her aorta. 
those who don't know, Princess Diana um, had had hit her aorta burst. And, and what happens is the blood goes into a sack that's like less than paper thin. And while when they, they have to, to fix the, the, the aorta, they have to, of course, put into that sack. And while they're trying to close the, the aorta, people bleed out and they die. Almost everybody does. Yes. So, <clears throat> so he got on a plane. And while he flew to be by her side, which, of course, was all they thought was pointless, I spent the whole night on my knees. And repeatedly that night, I put my, I can't even talk about it. She's twice as old as she was when this happened. I can't talk about it to this day without crying. Well, I repeatedly put my daughter in back into God's arms and said, thank you that you gave her to me for that little time. And now, thank you, I'll, I'll give her back. And if you don't give your child back during that time, I swear, I, that's the only reason I still have my child. So I understand, as maybe very few people do, what it's like. Yes. Yes, I think it's one of the most difficult experiences that we can have. In my book, however, I cover very kind, various kinds of losses, not just the loss of a loved one. Uh, I covered divorce, the loss of career, the loss of health, oh, financial. Yeah, it's very thorough. I mean, and, and people don't, I guess people don't understand sometimes. Well, you know, you were people, you were covered and nobody died, that kind of thing. And people think it's not so painful for them. But yes, horrible things happen that are, are there was one guy who had a, like a, a, a giant dog and the dog was named Tiny because it was tiny when he was a puppy. And that that was devastating for that man that that some yes. some criminal had killed that dog. Yes, I I in fact have a case of pet loss uh, in the book. It can be very devastating. Uh, what's different about my book? Um, there are literally thousands of books out there on grieving. What's different about my book is I wrote it for later on after you've passed through the typical. <clears throat> phases of grieving, and you're left feeling empty and dead inside and don't know if you'll ever be happy again. I wrote it for that period. I wrote it about how to come back to enjoy life again and how to uh, heal that great loss. So it's for later on. It's not early on in your loss. Right. No, yeah, it was was wonderful because... (sighs) One of the things people have trouble understanding, I think, is that when you have that kind of a loss, you somehow have to find a way to put yourself back together again and live the rest of your life. You have to be able to go on and and people expect you to go on and yet you're torn apart and you were living yes. through this and you you were you were very open about what you were going through and I didn't actually lose my daughter. That's the thing about this. They were able to get in there in time. And and for some reason, they were able to fix her. They I I think what they did was they were they basically stopped her heart. They did they did major surgery. This is for some reason in Madison, Wisconsin, they could do this. But go on. I'm sorry, I made this very personal to me. But because to this day, that kind of a loss is personal to me. I, I lived it through a whole horrible night. But you, you, you t- 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 talk about the stages. You made it so real what you were going through that I lived through it with you. Well, <clears throat> it was a very difficult experience for me because it was so unexpected. I had had knee surgery and my daughter was planning on taking care of me when I came home. She was an adult at this point. But, and so and the I'm loss sorry was, to interrupt you, but, but but people need to know what happened. Your daughter was an adult, but she had been raped and and traumatized yes. very badly. Tell that story. Yes. What happened to my daughter was she was having dinner with friends, and afterwards she walked alone uh, back to her car in a dark parking lot. She was attacked. She was beaten, raped, and robbed and left for dead, essentially. And the sad part about this is she refused to go to the hospital and she refused to tell anybody about this. 
including me for a while. And she was terribly broken. She didn't leave the house for three weeks. She told me that she had been in a car accident with her friends and that explained all her injuries. Oh my goodness. It took me a while of sitting with her to get this information from her. When she tried to go back to work, she couldn't do it and ended up wrecking her car on that day. So that was when I brought her back home to live with me again, to take care of her and see if I could get her healed and and back, back to life, essentially. And we had our ups and downs, definitely. But in retrospect, she never actually totally recovered from this experience. So it was a, a long and difficult experience for me. Being a life between life facilitator, I was very much in touch with my higher self. My spiritual life was very rich. But when my daughter was injured in this fashion, I turned all my attention toward my daughter. I became very outer focused, focused on her. Even though I continued my professional activities, she was the focus of my life at that point. If she had a good day, I did. If she didn't, nothing was right for me either. Of course. And so I lost my connection with my inner guidance and my strong spiritual life at that point. And the theory that I present in my book is that some losses hurt much more than others. I had lost my mother and my brother. I had gone through a divorce. All of those were very painful loss. But the loss of my daughter completely devastated me. It just caused my life to crumble. And I didn't know if I would ever recover. And I learned later on that the reason that The loss of my daughter was so much worse than other losses I had experienced was because at that point, I was not in touch with my inner guidance. And my theory is that when we have a loss that occurs, when we're not in touch with our inner guidance, it is much more painful, longer to heal, and is much more difficult to heal from. Of course. There are several ways that we might not be in touch with our inner guidance. My way, of course, was that I became very focused on something outside of myself, uh, my daughter's healing. Yes. Others can be very focused on something outside of themselves, perhaps focus so much on another person, perhaps a lover or um, a child that uh, they can be living their lives essentially through that person at that time, or they can be very focused on a career, a quest for money, fame, whatever. Uh, Another way we can be very disconnected from our guidance is when we become so busy and so distracted that we don't take any time to really reflect and look at what's going on inside of us. And yet another way is when we find a couple comfortable niche in our life to to exist in. It's comfortable. It doesn't take much effort. We don't ever have to look deeply inside or face any struggles. We just go along comfortably without really taking any time to go through the difficult process of growing. So those are all ways that we can be disconnected from our inner guidance. So when a loss occurs, a major loss, when we're disconnected from our inner guidance, it can be absolutely devastating. It hurts worse than other losses, and it takes a lot longer and more effort to heal. One of the things that's wonderful about your book is that at the end of each chapter, 
you talk about ways to kind of get deeper in yourself that are comfortable. You, it's not, they're not so much exercises. They're just like gentle suggestions about ways to, to kind of get deeper, to, to, to think about things, to, to get more in touch with yourself. I thought those were wonderful. Um, a broad range of things too. Not everybody is different and, you know, we're not all the same jalopy. We're, we're, there are different ways for each of us to get better, more in touch with ourselves. I thought that was great. The book is written from the perspective of the soul. There is no loss in the spiritual world. <clears throat> so one of the things that we come to earth to learn is to deal with and cope with loss and through overcoming difficult experiences like loss, that is how we build soul character. That's how we grow spiritually. But that doesn't mean it's an easy process. Far from it. So loss is an experience that can actually enrich our lives and make us better people and allow us to experience more joy and fulfillment in our lives and accomplish more. If someone would have told me when I that when I was in the middle of my grief experience, it would have really upset me. But the truth of the matter is loss can be a gift. It can open up whole new areas in our lives, but we have to heal first before we can accept the gift of loss. And when we have one of these great losses, it will bring up every loss we've had in the past that we haven't completely healed. And so it can feel very overwhelming when we're in the middle of it. But I want to tell everybody that there's light at the end of the tunnel, that things can be better than ever after healing. Well, yeah, that's, I thought it was interesting that you talked about, you said great loss comes into our lives when we're stuck in patterns that are limiting our spiritual growth. The loss frees us from these limiting patterns and enables us to return to pursuing the plans we made for our current life on earth. The gift in this experience is the opportunity to become our authentic self and achieve renewed fulfillment and joy in our lives now uh, what was interesting about this is the the law the loss for example of your daughter from this life isn't really related to where your head was and yet it obviously helped your head it's 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 almost as if something had to come along and jog you that way. And this happened to be, this loss of your daughter happened to be what came along. Is that your experience in counseling that, that something comes along that jogs people? It yes. In fact, uh, from my life between lives sessions, I have heard from clients that before they come to this earth, they made a, an agreement with their guides that should they become off their spiritual path, lose their way in terms of fulfilling the purpose that they set for coming to this life. They wanted something that would jog them back onto their life path. It doesn't necessarily have to be lost. There are other experiences that could do that for us, but loss is one of the experiences that can pull us back to the purpose that we set for coming to this life in the beginning. That, that's fascinating. It's sort of like, like we're playing multidimensional chess in our lives in a way. Yes. Yes. And we have many opportunities to learn. And one of the gifts of loss is that we do learn from loss. We learn how to cope with, difficult experiences in our lives, and this builds soul character. And the, one of the bright lights for me out of this experience was I knew all along that we don't die. Of course. Right. Our body dies, but our soul continues to live on. 
And I had guided many people through sessions in the past into contact with their departed loved ones. But somehow when my daughter died, I felt incapable of making this connection myself initially. However, <clears throat> I was able to very successfully reconnect with my daughter, and I now can actually have conversations with her. I saw that. You used you seem to have used Craig Hogan's or some variation of his technique. I did. Initially, I used Craig Hogan's technique for connecting with our departed loved ones. And I have an interesting story on that. I had read all about it, and I had planned to start using it on the patio. I saw that, yeah. Where I used to sit and, and chat with my daughter, but I wasn't planning to do it right then, maybe later on in the day or even <laughs> in the next few days. So I walked out the door onto the patio, and suddenly a stream of thoughts started popping into my head. What stopped me short was the word hoodoo guru. My daughter <laughs> lovingly called me a hoodoo guru because of my spiritual work. Uh -huh. And I hadn't thought of that word in a very long time. And that just stopped me short. I sat down in one of the patio chairs and asked, honey, is that you? And I got back the typical sassy well, who do you think it would be? Oh, gee, yeah, yeah, they were always. And that was our first conversation. Isn't that fun. A lot of people have had success. I've never t tried his because, of course, I don't have any uh, any connections I want to make. I, everybody I know of theirs, fine. But it's, I, I read that section. I thought that was hysterical. Yeah, he hears from a lot of people it works for. Um, yes. I think that's wonderful. And you said there are, that that cells from our children are in our brains or attached to our brains. Some yes, <clears throat> mycotrimerism. That is that there's a very strong connection between mothers and children, between parents and children. Really, I experienced a shared death experience because of that. But what that is talking about is that. Cells have been found in the brains of mothers from their children. It's theorized that they pass through the placenta during oh, pregnancy. Wow. So there's a very close connection between mothers and, and children. And there's a very close connection between parents and children. What I've learned is that parents can actually have a shared death experience with their children, even though they're not present when the death occurs. This is how mine occurred. I was hospitalized at the time following knee surgery. Right. And in the morning, after I'd had we breakfast had and that story. Yeah. Yeah. for my rehab session, I suddenly had an experience of starting to feel very weak, slightly nauseated. I sat down in a chair and soon I was so weak I couldn't move and even felt like I couldn't breathe. I had the sudden realization I'm dying, but I wasn't upset about it. And felt, in fact, I felt very calm about it. Uh, I stopped being nervous at that point about the weakness and I just relaxed into it. I felt this beautiful feeling of floating along. I'm dying, but that's fine. And it ended as soon as it had begun, probably didn't take more than about 10 or 15 minutes. And then I came out of it. The nurses examined me carefully afterwards. Nothing was amiss. But then, of course, later, we found out from the coroner that my experience happened at about the exact time that my daughter had, had died. Wow. Gift in this experience for me was I was given the gift of knowing that when this happened, she passed very peacefully. Oh, wow. No, that's, um, that, that's a toughie. And, and she had died because she was also taking, she was being medicated for her, for her, um, 
her emotional issues, but she also she actually was, died of a drug overdose. Yeah. She, she was she on was, uh, anti-anxiety medication. She had PTSD and agoraphobia. Yeah. Uh, so she was heavily medicated, uh, but she had come off a lot of them because she seemed to be recovering yeah. at that yeah. point. Um, I was never aware that she was using anything other than her prescription medications, but it turns out that she ended up taking some street drugs. At the end, she died of a fentanyl overdose. Oh, no. Oh, I'm so, so sorry. Well, so that was another shocking experience for me. Yeah, it was. I mean, you, you, the fact that you have done so well in your life when you've been through all of this is, I think, a testimony, a testimony to the, to how well these processes that you yourself teach and, and administer for others really work. And I mean, they do work because there you are living this really powerful, beautiful life yourself now. So thank you so much for sharing them with others. This is, this is wonderful. Thank you. Well, the <clears throat> the early part of my loss was very difficult. I cried every day for at least a year, if not longer. Yeah. And what I want to point out to people is we have defining moments that come up after we've had a great loss. <clears throat> and what a defining moment is, is it's something that comes up in which we make a split second decision. We don't necessarily know it's coming, but it is something that points us in one direction or another and affects the course of our lives. So I point out in my book that we don't know when these defining moments are coming, but we, we can prepare for them. If we start to think about what we would like our life to be like after we get beyond the experience of the acute grief, then when these defining moments come up, we will make a choice that points us in that direction. Otherwise, we might make a choice that's not in our best self-interest. And so you, so you, made, you made your right decision in, those, in that moment, right? I think initially I did not. One of the things I did early on was I was offered a project. And that was when I was still in the middle of pretty acute grieving. And I made the decision in that defining moment to accept that project. But it was not the right thing for me. As I got into it, it helped for a while because it distracted me. And it took my mind off my grief. But at quiet moments when I wasn't working, wasn't busy, I just became sadder and it just felt worse. So it occurred to me that I'd made the wrong decision. Oh, yeah. That I needed to take more time to just heal from my grieving. So at that point, I left the project and <clears throat> took some time to simply uh, spend time healing from my grief and taking the time that I needed to get beyond this experience. So initially I made the wrong decision, but we always have other opportunities to make the right decision. One of the questions um, I, I made notes about as I was reading, uh, I wanted to ask you about, I think you mentioned it a little bit in your book, but I often nowadays get questions about abortion because um, many women have abortions and regret it later, sometimes for the rest of their lives. Um, they grieve quite a bit and don't expect to because, you know, in our culture, for some reason, everyone thinks it's just like having a tonsil removed. Um, and what, what, what do you what, what is do you have thoughts about abortion? What is your sense about abortion? And can you share what? What your sense? Is. Well, I what I can share is <clears throat> I have done past life regressions and life between life sessions for women who have had abortions. And we have been able to talk 
to the child that was actually aborted, the soul that was aborted. And in all cases, we're told that this was something that was known about and planned ahead of time, that there is just love. There is nothing to regret. There is total understanding and uh, that the child, the soul that was aborted, uh, knew about this ahead of time, and they will just uh, come back and be incarnated again. Sometimes they do so with the same mother. Really? Oh, that makes me feel better. I don't know if, I, I don't know if people listening feel better, but I certainly do. And I want to point out that we've learned from our work in Life Between Lives that often the soul does not enter the fetus until very late in the pregnancy, sometimes right at birth or slightly thereafter. Yeah, they, they don't seem to, you know, ride around inside the, the baby for nine months, but they do seem to attach at the moment of conception or, yes. or even before. Yes. And often mothers will have dreams about the soul that's going to become their child. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, so uh, with the question of whether whether life uh, begins at conception or, or or when, it seems to begin at conception, but the baby doesn't doesn't stay in the inside the the fetus. I mean, think how boring that would be. My goodness. Explain that a little further, and that is, we are souls who come to Earth and join with the human body. Yeah. The soul. Um, it is immortal. The soul will live forever. Right. The human body has a finite life. Right. So the life of the body starts at conception. Right. But the soul has not necessarily joined with the body yet. That may happen early on. It may not happen until yeah, and, and sometimes the very end of the pregnancy. We, we're, we're told that even though um, there's a there's a a soul destined for that body they can change their minds and sometimes a perfectly healthy baby will be stillborn because this the the being that was going to take that body changed their minds and yes the people don't if people if, if somebody else doesn't say okay i have i have second dibs on that body uh the baby in fact i had a friend that happened to the they, the 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 baby was born stillborn because nobody ended up taking the the body at the last minute. I don't know. This is all fun, interesting, and complicated. But I'm very glad to hear that when regressions were done and the they the baby the the aborted baby was talked to, um, it was all okay. Uh, the baby was yes, going to come back. That, absolutely. That was that. That's reassuring to me. Good. One thing I want to point out is. There's nothing but love, harmony, peace, joy, and forgiveness on the other side. Absolutely. So if the last words you said to a loved one that died were in anger, or if you never were able to heal the relationship you had with them in this life, that is all just forgotten, forgiven once the soul goes back to the other side. And you will be welcomed with love and open arms when you go back home. Oh, to the totally other. true. Thank you for saying that. I, I think it's very important for people to understand that there's nothing that cannot be forgiven. There's nothing. There's, there's, there's nothing that you can possibly say or do that you will not be forgiven for. And you will always be loved. There's just no other way. Um, yes. I have a lot of trouble understanding that. And I, I think that the, because that's, we always, we always think, I think that there's something about religion that, that um, makes people feel less than worthy, but we, we are infinitely loved. Yes. What I, Very here's something that you said, which I thought I want people to hear. What I learned was that I was not broken, but rather that I had been broken open by my loss. Oh, so true. Yes. Very yes. true. I think that uh, I was broken open and it allowed me to access 
parts of myself that I did not know prior to the loss. And it allowed me to grow in ways that I never could have imagined. I ended up looking at the loss of my daughter as a gift, really. Yes. She was with me for a time, and I honored that as a gift. She had completed what she had come here to do. She simply went back home. And when I go back home at the end of my life, she'll be there to welcome me with oh, open yes. arms. She'll be there at your bedside. Oh, so true. Not all gifts are fun to receive, but they're gifts all the same. And, and you recognize that. It can be so hard for us sometimes to see things as gifts, which really are. Yes. Something else I'd like to say about Michael Newton's books, because I hear from people who have read them and they didn't understand them. Um, they shouldn't be the first books, Journey of Souls, Destiny of Souls, shouldn't be the first books you re- that you read about the afterlife because they approach the afterlife experiences at, at a more sophisticated level, in my experience, than do some other books. Um, but they are true and they are beautiful. Um, it's just, it's, how could I describe it? They're, they look not so much at, at the scenery as some, as for example, my books are very basic books, the fun of dying. I mean, please fun. Um, Journey of souls and destiny of souls are, are much more sophisticated books. So they, they can be later books that you read, but they are very true and they're very beautiful as well. Um, yes, I would agree with that. And I think uh, the latest Newton Institute book, wisdom of souls explains how knowing this information can help you in your current life, how it can help you navigate the lessons that you've chosen for this particular lifetime and how it can help you find the purpose that you've set for this life. That's wonderful. Um, The Michael Newton Institute is a very wonderful place to learn and grow more uh, spiritually yourself in in trying to better understand what your purpose is in this life and how to grow better spiritually. And um, and you're you're you are a facilitator um, of, of some of the lessons and helping people to use what the Institute teaches. Right. That's what you do. in Yes. Your practice. I'm a certified life between life facilitator. In a life between life session, you uh, become in contact with your soul. You're able to talk to your higher self and you are able to obtain information and advice and guidance from your guides and higher beings in the spiritual realm. You're able to find out more about your life purpose. You're able to gain understanding about the challenges you're facing in your life to understand more about the relationships you have in your life, why they might be working out the way they are, what you can do to improve them and how you can better spend the rest of your days on earth. That's wonderful. Thank you for that. And we're, we're, we're starting to approach the, the end of our time together. So, and what would you like, people to take away from our conversation today what what do you hope they will have learned from what we've said today the first thing i'd like to say is even though a loss is very devastating and very painful there is light at the end of the tunnel it is possible to be very happy again to be very fulfilled and to have a wonderful life and if you've lost a loved one I want you to know that they didn't die. They're still living. They're in another dimension, but they're still accessible to you. They still love you. They want to be in touch with you. They still want to be part of your life and you can still have a relationship with them. Right. Beautiful. That's just beautiful. And you can, um, I, I guess the easiest way really to reach in is at hypnoanclark at gmail.com or her website is 
birminghamhypnosis.com. This will all be in the materials with this with this episode. Um, and you do private sessions with people, right? Yes. Yes, I do both past life regressions and life between life sessions. Great. Perfect. Oh, this has been wonderful. I, as I said, seriously, when I was reading, when I, I didn't realize you had basically lost your only child. I, I tell people, you know, life is kind. If you, if you're going to lose a child, they'll leave you one child. But in your case, that wasn't the case. Oh my goodness. I wanted to hug you when I was reading that so much. Thank you. Lord. Sometimes things are tough, but, but still you got through it. Um, as they say, what does not kill you makes you stronger. And it's certainly that was the case with you, my dear. Yes. Well, we are, we have, um, we're going to do this again. I think I, I want to talk to you about some of those other books, because this is, this is very, one of the things as anyone who listens to this, this relatively regularly listens to this program knows that we're working very diligently on Seek Reality Online. And it's coming along, my friends, finally, we're, we're putting it together. And I think it's going to be not half bad. And one of the things that Craig wants to do very much is, is work with people who are grieving people who um, are working with people who are grieving or who are in hospice care. And we want very much to help people come to use the lessons of this lifetime to grow spiritually. There is so much. We cannot begin to tell you what's ahead. What's ahead is so much better than anything you've ever dreamed of. And to make the most of it, we've really got to digest the lessons that we've come here to learn. And the, the, these books that Anne is producing and the other people at the Newton Institute are producing are wonderful ways to really make the most of the, what we've come here to learn. And so I think, Anne, it would be good in a few months if you came back with some more of, of these lessons that, that you, you're teaching people at the Newton Institute. I, I would be delighted to do that. That would be great. We're going to, we'll do that everyone. I think I, I have a few things to learn too. I, I have got to tell you, my goodness. So um, here we go. It's been a wonderful time. Thank you so much. And, um, and we'll do this again. And meanwhile, and meanwhile, please consider yourself hugged because you really deserve a hug for the, for all of you've been through my dear. Thank you so much. And so we've come to the end of our time, everyone. This has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes, and I'm so glad you could be with us today. Meanwhile, please never forget that you are a powerful, eternal being. You never began and you never will end. And when you get what that means, you are going to, it, I, I can't begin to tell you all the difference it will make in your life right now. Next week, our guest will be Lee Tomlinson. He's also known as Patient Lee, although I have talked with this guy on the phone. He's, he's not patient about anything. His personal mission is to inspire healthcare professionals to return compassionate care, compassionate care to its rightful place at the forefront of modern health care in order to benefit patients and their families, the bottom line, and also the healthcare professionals themselves. He says that finding his mission wasn't even remotely easy. He's an award-winning television producer, a movie, movie studio executive, former professional athlete, a public speaker, a TED Talk presenter, and he's alive today, he says, due to the com combination of a lifetime of extraordinarily effective medical treatment and also deeply kind and compassionate care. He had stage three th throat cancer, and he became very much aware of the trauma caused by treatment lacking in compassion. He tells us that what saved him from suicide was a tiny, simple, yet powerful act of compassion delivered by a loving doctor and friend. In the end, he tries to help people now do whatever is necessary to prevent the burnout that affects more than 60% of healthcare professionals. And I have watched it, frankly, firsthand. My own husband was one who, a doctor who ended up retiring early. He retired in his 50s because he couldn't take it anymore. But we need every doctor who has gone through medical training. We need them to stay in practice. So please join us next week and we'll learn what we all can do to try to keep them, keep them practicing. And of course, this week, our guest has been Ann Clark. 
She's been with us for the second time and she'll come back again to talk more about what we need to do to, to try to learn more about how we can help everyone who is going through these extraordinary, and many people do go through extraordinary loss. And we can learn how we, in our lives and in the lives of other people, can help people heal from inside all the way to the outside and grow spiritually from these extraordinary, awful experiences. Her, this book we've been talking about this week is called Healing from Great Loss, Facing Pain and Grief to Recover Your Authentic Self. I didn't know she had been through what she's been through, but my goodness, what an extraordinary human being. You may not need it now. But someone you love very much may someday need the special wisdom that Anne can teach. So please join us next time she's with us. And let's all learn how to be the kind of counselor that she is now. As you know, my own nonfiction books are liberating Jesus, my Thomas, the fun of dying, the fun of you can tell I'm a fun person. <laughs> wow, it's a very important word to me. The fun of staying in touch, the fun of growing forever, and the fun of living together. And I have just gotten the go ahead. We are going to be putting out the fun of loving Jesus, embracing the Christianity that Jesus, Jesus taught in May of this year. For young children, there's the fun of meeting Jesus, and you can order all these books through bookstores or on Amazon.com. They're also available, the adult books are as audiobooks. If you want to talk about any of my books or anything at all, you can just always email me through the contact block, the green box block on robertagrimes.com. Just make sure you give me your correct email address. Past episodes of Seek Reality are available on webtalkradio.net, realrevolutionradio.com, iTunes, iHeartRadio, or just about anywhere else. Or you can always just get the Seek Reality app on for free on at the iTunes app store. And actually, I discovered you can find it just about anywhere else also. Meanwhile, my dear friends, this has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Please enjoy and make the most of this coming week in our one reality, knowing that you are a powerful, eternal being and you most of all in the entire universe. You in particular are infinitely loved. You've been listening to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Roberta blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Join us every week as we explore what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about the one reality we all share. Knowing the truth changes everything.